Greetings, Captains. I am Wizard, and welcome to a very special Starfield Ship Build Guide. First of all, I have to extend a very sincere thank you to all of you, as I have reached 5,000 subscribers, and I never anticipated reaching even that point, much less as quickly as you guys have allowed me to. So to show my thanks to all of you, I've decided to not only rebuild my most popular ship, but overhaul it using all of the things that I have learned from the ships that I have built since I published the Basilisk. Just like the original, the Basilisk 2 is a Class C destroyer build, and I realize now at this point that I grossly uh, misclassified the original build should be considered a destroyer and not a light destroyer. Don't worry, I'll change the title. But as you can see from these intro shots, I have made improvements to the exterior design of the ship, utilizing some of the features uh, that I found while building other ships. You can see a little hint of the uh, Aegis tail there in the back around the reactor. Overall, the ship's exterior design is identical, but the HAB layout has gone through some significant changes. In some places, I chose the same HABs as before because I think I did a few things right in the original, but where I could, I made some very much needed changes based on what I've learned. One of the big ones is the core window that I discovered in the Citadel build, but I also learned from my commenters in that video that the armillary would be visible if you could see the grab drive. So I implemented these things and did my best to make improvements across the board, although I did sacrifice some cargo so that the ship could have maximized mobility, uh, but that one is up to you. Let's get into it, guys. If you just found my channel, welcome, and if you're new to Starfield, I have ship builds starting at level 14. This is the Peregrine, which is a rebuild of the Frontier. At level 30, you can build the Atos. You can get the ship sooner, but the Peregrine will last you. Then you can upgrade to the Atos 2 at level 43. At level 49, you can build the Citadel, which is one of the earliest in-game destroyer ships you can build. Then at level 60 I have several builds. The Scythe uses the White Dwarf 3015s. The Helion is a balanced fighter. The Aegis is a Class B Corvette. And my cargo ships, the Bristleback is meant to be flown. It is able to defend itself, but if you need maximum cargo capacity, I also have the slab. All of these builds can be found in my Starship Archive playlist. A ship of this size is capable of hauling a million credits worth of vitinium, and this is very useful for building ships. If you want to see that, or potentially need some ideas for home base locations, as well as outpost builds, please check out my Outpost Guide Playlist. Although I do love building things, I also like a little bit of pew pew. So if you're interested in first person combat, I have the Becoming a God series. I started with no combat skills and I intend to attain all of the combat skills by the end of this one. Build requirements for the Basilisk 2 are identical to the original Basilisk. You'll need to be at character level 60. And to start this build, I decided to purchase the Dragonfire. And if you do this as well, it will cost you 942,000 credits. But if you're starting from an already owned ship, you'll only need 684,000 credits to build this version of the Basilisk exactly as I do. You'll also need Starship Design rank 4, Piloting rank 4, you need to complete the mission Grunt Work, which unlocks all of the UC Vanguard specific ship modules, and you'll also need to complete the mission All That Money Can Buy. That mission unlocks the SAL 6830 engines that are crucial for this build, 
and these engines can allow you to haul up to 7,000 units of cargo. I did that with the Citadel and that ship is much heavier than this one and still has 96 mobility. So I only equip 3,000 cargo in this build, uh, but that is what I prefer. Originally, I purchased the Dragonfire to start designing the Aegis. Until I discovered that Deimos sells a ship called the Aegis, so naturally I had to go buy that one. But if you want to buy the Dragonfire, head to the Elios Retreat on Ixel 2. Initially when you come here there will be the start of a quest happening, so once you pass that you can find the ship tech in this little white structure here. Get in to see what ships that he has for sale, and purchase yourself a Dragonfire. And once you have your canvas, go ahead and take off and let's get to work. Whether you bought a Dragonfire or any other ship, or you're starting from an owned ship, the first place you want to go is Parima 3 to the Red Mile. And if you've watched any of my previous videos, you've probably guessed it, we're getting a scan jammer here. Just want this day to be over already. Uh -huh. I got plenty, as long as you've got the creds. After your charming interaction with Lon, get into your ship builder, find the equipment tab, and equip a multi-frequency scan jammer, and you're finished. Good luck with... Well, whatever. Next, you want to head to the Voli system, to Neon. Here we're going to visit Veronica at Teo Astroneering. If you haven't been here before, you're looking for Ryujin Tower, which is the crimson red on the inside. Find the elevator and go down to Teo Astroneering, then talk to Veronica. Once you're in your ship builder, the first thing we want to attach to our donor ship are the engines. Find the 6830s in your engine tab and attach them however you can. Now we are overweight. So we also need to get two of the Teo Pinpoint 4G landers. And these are going to go on our final build, so these are not a waste uh, of credits. And before I left, I decided I would just throw on my 28T Defender Shield and attach the Pinch 8Z Reactor, as that is not available at your outpost landing pad. Once you have those things, you're done. Now we have our core components, but we need to get some HABs before we go to our landing pad. First stop for HABs is Deimos. Today is the day. The day you arm yourself with the finest death dealing vessel known to man. Of course. Once you are in the builder, you need to make space however you can to attach a Deimos 2x2 battle station. Once you have that in place, do whatever else you need to to reattach everything to your ship and clear the checks and you are done. Our final stop before we get to the full build is Titan, which is a moon of Saturn, and we're looking for a new homestead. And this is where you can get Nova specific parts. So find the ship tech on the landing pad. And what we need to do here is get two 2x2 two two Habs. So first thing I did was make room for those. However you can do it, get those attached and get everything else attached to your ship. Now I'm going to use a couple fillers here just to make sure everything attaches. It doesn't matter what you use. Use whatever uh, you've already had on your ship. And if you didn't know, this was the only location where the Cabot Bridge is available. Now this is optional if you started with the Dragonfire, but I switched to the C4. You can use what came with it if you wish. With all of the parts gathered, we can now head to an outpost with a landing pad with Ship Builder. I am heading to my home base on Schrodinger 8A. 
And for this build, I am keeping it all uncut. So from this point forward, until I place the last part, there will be no cuts in the footage. Select everything and delete it. And let's start from scratch. Starting with our landing bay, which is going to be the shipbed 200 facing forward. Now, we're going to place a storeroom here, and it's going to be a Deimos. But now we are already differing from my original build. Give yourself a 2x1 workshop and a 2x1 armory connected to that. Now we want to go ahead and place our landing gear. So they are on the bottom. We don't want to have to worry about this later. So you want to line up four uh, Stroud Eklund Aculander 11s on each side of the habs you just placed. On the front of each of these, you want a Stroud nose cap. That's the nose cap A. You just rotate it until it's in the right orientation. Now, another thing I did different on the tail was I removed the shielded cargoes that I used in the last one, the 100 CMs, to allow for a sleeker shape on the bottom of the ship in the rear. So place two Nova cowlings on the back of the landing gears. Now, moving on with our Habs, I have found that the 3x1s cause issues and tend to generate ladders where you don't want them. So we're going to place a 3x1 on top of this workshop here. And to make sure we don't get a ladder that we don't want, what we want to do is get our 3x1. And the reason I use the Nova here is because the Deimos had some lighting issues on the inside that I didn't like. But a Deimos engineering bay works well here too and uh, it will match the rest of the walls on the habs on this level. Now to ensure you don't get an erroneous ladder, using the attachment method, replace your workshop and your armory. And this should prevent any ladders from spawning inside of the 3x1 other than down to the 1x1 that's below it. Now in front of the 3x1 we want our Deimos Battle Station 2x2. And next to that, we're going to use a Deimos computer core. And you'll see here, when I try to use the attachment method, that it wants to attach in this way. But even when I attach it back here, it doesn't give me the hatch in that location. It still gives me a hatch on the front snapping point. It's no big deal, uh, but I just thought I would point it out. Now, of course, on the front of our battle station, we want our bridge. So go and find the Cabot Bridge, whichever one you chose, and snap that on there now. Next thing that we want to do is get the rest of our main deck laid out. So find the Nova Galactic all-in-one berth 2x2, and you want to place it on the right rear of the Nova 3x1 engineering bay. On the opposite side you want the living quarters 2x2. Two two. Now attached to the front side point of the 2x2 two two, we are going to place a Stroud all-in-one berth A 2x1. Because there's a pool table and a little living room area with a TV in that 2x1 there the living quarters makes more sense on that side whereas on the opposite side we're gonna place our infirmary and you'll see in the interior walkthrough uh, why I laid them out this way and this is another change from the original as before I went with a living quarters and a brig back there since the brigs are useless without mods and I'm waiting for them to be available on console so I'm not leaving any of you out I decided to replace the brig with another living quarters. Now on the top uh, of the 3x1, in the front point, I went with a Stroud 1x1, and in front of that was the Stroud all-in-one berth B. Behind the top 1x1, I went with a Hope Tech 
captain's quarters. And now we can start adding some of our filler for extra attachment points before we move on to other areas of the ship. And I'm thinking about it here, but I wound up just going with the Deimos Hole A. Just looks the most solid to me. Go ahead and place one of them on each side, just behind the 2x2 two two and the 2x1 two on your main level, because right here you want to place a fuel tank on each side. And for the attachment points, I went for the 500T. This again is another difference to the original build, whereas in the original Basilisk I used one 900T because it's got the best fuel capacity to weight ratio in the game. Now to make up for the capacity, I did use a third fuel tank, 500T, but right here we're adding the core window. And you can see how I set this up. Uh, you can choose a different shield if you wish. They will pretty much all go in here uh, depending on what else you choose to cram into that space as well. So once you have your parts of choosing, I also put an equipment plate in there for a future module that we don't have access to yet. Uh, you can go ahead and start building around that when you're done there. So to get our core components attached, we need some attachment points back here. First thing is our two big cargo holds which are the Galleon S203s and they have one of the best cargo capacity to weight ratios in the game and they are great. So here's what we've got so far and now we have these two attachment points here we can use to get our grav drive on and I went with the Apollo GV200 as it uh, with my astrodynamic skill gives me 30 light years of jump range. And I don't have Sarah Morgan on board my ship anymore so uh, we're not seeing her skill reflected in that jump range currently. Now attached to the grav drive of course we want our pinch 8z reactor and there is our major core components other than our engines. On each side of the Pinch 8Z, attach a 200cm ballast shielded cargo. And on the Nova Cowling rear attachment point, we're going to place a Stroud Engine Bracer B on each side. This is a little trick I learned from the Aegis build. Now this is the one place where I used a flip glitch, just because I like the way these Hope Tech uh, nose bees look on the back of those cargo units just to make them look a little more interesting and uh, less flat. So these won't go in here normally uh, but if you didn't know the flip glitch trick all you need is a part that can be flipped and you want to select it, move it into place, flip it, flip it back and cancel the move and it will stay there. Now, typically I don't like using uh, very blatant and obvious glitches uh, but this one just has a small corner of clipping and I was okay with it as it's usually out of your vision anyway. I just wanted to fill that space up back there better than I did on the original build. So here we're going to place our third fuel tank and if you really want to maximize your weight on this build go with the 900T back there you'll just have to get rid of the core window. And on each side of the third fuel tank, I closed it up with a Teo side cap B. So here is the ship so far. And I have tried my best to build from the bottom up so we don't have to go back down to the bottom later on. But now we can place our final HAB module, which is a Stroud Armory. And this is intended to be a personal captain's armory kind of inspired by uh, what I did in the Citadel. So place that up there on the rear top attachment of your captain's quarters. And we can throw our Deimos Slim Docker on the bottom of the forward 1x1 one one unit. And 
now let's start getting some of the shape of this ship completed. Start with a Stroud Cowling 3LA on each side behind the cockpit. And of course a Stroud Cap A behind each of those on each side. And that part's done. Let's get these wings looking a little bit better and pretty soon we can start attaching engines. So this is one Stroud cap that we need here and here. And these sort of end up looking like they are funneling air into some big intakes on the back of the ship. And behind the armory on the top of the ship we want a Stroud cap C. And now duplicate one of your Deimos hull A's, and you want two on each side right here. Your engines are going to attach to the back of those. On the front of the armory, we want another hull A, and then we want a Nova Cowling 2L. And this is another difference to the original build, and this is due to a difference in weapons choices. Now to finish off this upper feature, we want a Nova Cowling 2L on each side, and that'll do it for up there. Now we have all the attachment points that we need for our engines, so let's get those on. Heaven forbid we forget to attach our engines. We're going to go with one on each side up here, duplicate it. But before we do that, we want to attach a Stroud braking engine to the lower attachment point on each of those top engines. One here, one here. Now we can place the rest of our engines. If you remember from the original build, there's no difference here. I really like the arrangement of the engines on this ship, especially considering how large these ones are, uh, but it really gives it a dynamic shape from almost every angle. Very unique and uh, very attractive in my opinion. So now on to the wings. We want a Stroud nose cap C on the front of each of our outside HAB modules. And then on the front of our lower outside engines we want to place our Teo Pinpoint 4G landers. On the front of that, of course, just like the original build, I stuck with the Teo braking engines. And that was part of the reason for using the Teo landing gear. That was a suggestion from one of my commenters from the original build. Thank you to whoever you are. Now, just like the original again, we're going to get our Deimos wing A's. And give the rear of this ship a nice tapered look. And the repetition of those parts really helps to unify the shape of the ship and make it appear to be more holistically designed. And that is the bulk of the build. All we have left to do is get our weapons attached and we're going to add some portholes and some other little details as well uh, before we move on to painting. And just as a reminder, this is all still uncut footage at this point. I have not put any cuts in this build. It's all real time. So to really finish out the shape of the wings, you want to add a Deimos bumper to each one, and then a Deimos wing E on the opposing face. And we need four Horizon weapons mounts. They are going to go in these locations here. I'm switching the weapons, and that's the reason for the change in weapons mounting and it also allowed me to change 
the top nose feature up there from a Nova uh, weapons mount to the Nova Galactic nose cap there and I think that is a much more attractive solution on the top of the ship it's definitely an improvement that I was happy to be able to make on this one now with our Deimos spines placed where they need to go on top of the ship's wings we can start adding our weapons now weapon group one or however you choose to assign it we're going to go with six Vanguard Hellfires we need six Vanguard Obliterators and we need four PBO 175s I'm starting that one up here but I do end up moving this PBO to a better location in a minute so stick with me while I attach these weapons and realize that I'm missing a few key parts for the build need a Deimos wing D up here uh, at the front of each of those rearward facing Deimos wing A's now we have our base weapons placed I went with the Hellfires in those locations and the Vanguard Obliterators are going here. PBO 175 is back here on the Deimos Wing E and one under the Wing D we just placed at the top rear of the ship. Uh, I tried to duplicate these in a group of four but they would not attach so maybe just don't waste your time. Just attach them one by one. With our weapons attached, we can add a few final touches to this ship. And the things I'm about to add are optional. You can place them anywhere else, or you can completely omit these things if you want to. Uh, I do like having windows where I can on my ships, although typically I use a lot of structural elements on the outside of my habs to shape my designs uh, in an attractive way. So wherever I can, I put portholes. In this case, I really only had those two spots open. And uh, to me, I don't think there's any reason for more than one window uh, per side of a hab. So to increase the feeling of openness to the outside, I went ahead and did some portholes. And this one down here is my favorite one. And that is the last part placed, and the build is complete. So that's it, the Basilisk 2. Once you have the build finished, your next step is to paint. And surprise, surprise, I went with the tried and true black and gray. Um, I wanted to do a jet black, pure black paint on this version of it, but I just didn't like all of the stark white elements on the parts that you can't change the color of. It was just too much of a contrast for me, as you'll see briefly here. And you just see all the scuffs and wear and all the white bits. It's too harsh, so backing it off a little bit. Once you are happy with your color choices, name your ship, and your Basilisk 2 is complete.
With the build complete, it is time for me to take you on a tour of the Basilisk 2. The ship looks the same on the outside for the most part, but it is significantly different on the inside, and I for one really like the changes that I was able to make using all of the knowledge that I have gained in the shipbuilder. So on the lower deck, the first difference that we will see from the original build is that we have a workshop and an armory down low. And the reason for this was to implement the core window feature into the ship um, and I like to have that as a part of the engineering bay if at all possible. The Citadel did not have a core window from the engineering bay uh, but that is where I found uh, the idea for that. I know others have done it before so it is not something that I came up with by any means uh, but the Citadel is what led me to discover it. So here's the Nova Galactic 3x1 engineering bay and again I chose this because the Deimos engineering bay had some lighting issues in the front. And walking back here we can see our window to the core and clearly see the armillary inside of the grav drive emitting a gentle glow and the empty equipment plate there is for a future addition. To the right we have our Nova Galactic 2x2 all-in-one berth. And this one to me felt best on this side. When we get to the left side of the ship you will see exactly why. Through here we have a nice little desk and common area as well as a bed and this leads into the infirmary hab. This is the Stroud module. And I chose the Stroud modules on the outside for their exterior shape because they flow with those nose caps on the wings. So moving past our core and our engineering bay the left side of the ship is the Nova Galactic Living Quarters 2x2. This is the one that has the pool table as well as at least one bed. I think one bed was removed because of the door to the Stroud all-in-one on the left there. So there's a bed, a couple of jump seats, here's the nice little living room area and this is why I chose to put the infirmary on the other side because to me it just made sense to have a little extra living space, almost like a bedroom directly off of the living room area in the Nova 2x2. I think this is an improvement over the original ship, uh, but let me know in the comments. We've got a few more Habs to look at before we take off. So the upper deck slightly different than the original. We climb the ladder up into the Stroud one by one, either companionway or storeroom, whichever you choose. And here we have the Stroud all-in-one berth B. Feels a little more open and uh, feels a little bit better attached to the bridge. Behind this we have the captain's quarters and I decided to put it in this location this time because it felt a little more private and secluded and it also gives us the ability to have a private personal armory as well. So again I think this is an improvement over the original and I chose the Hope Tech Captain's Quarters because of the interior layout and the nice little nook there where the bed goes and it also matches the dark wall aesthetic of the Stroud pieces on the upper deck. Now back to the main deck and into our Deimos battle stations. If you'll remember the original build I used Stroud hab modules for pretty much if not the whole ship. Uh, maybe the lower bottom deck was Deimos but this was Stroud in the original and the reason I switched to Deimos is because of the little angle on the corners of the outsides of these hab modules. Uh, I think it ties in a lot better with the shape of the Cabot Bridge 
and through this door we have our Deimos uh, 2x1 computer core. I use this in the Citadel also and I just think uh, out of all the computer cores this one and the Hope Tech computer core I think are my favorites. I have not tried any of the larger versions though. So through the front hatch the last place we have to look at is the bridge and this might be still my favorite bridge in the game all around. It is the only uh, ship module in the entire game that has stairs and you can use this cockpit if you lay out your habs the right way to uh, accomplish a ladderless build if that is your thing. For me I prefer to have more than one option for getting between decks that helps with the flow of the ship and I prefer to have a ladder despite having these stairwells. On this back wall you have your cargo hold, captain's locker, and armillary screen. And real quick, just through this hatch is our Stroud all-in-one berth B again. And that is the Basilisk 2. Uh, again, I, I'd love to hear in the comments if you guys think this is an improvement over the original build's interior. I think it is, but either way, for the combat in this video, we're going to go to Serpentis, the Key, and we're going to fight the Blatodea, the Shroud Bearer, and the Ecliptic Camulus. Let's go. The first creator I would like to introduce you to today is Ship Technician. He's only got 827 subscribers, so I'd love to help him get to a thousand. But his best engines in Starfield video was super informational. He breaks everything down with numbers and information and facts to better educate you on the ship parts. I also want to introduce you to Sista Citizen. She's been doing YouTube for quite a while and streams Starfield regularly. She's also built a friendly Discord community around Starfield and the other games that she plays. So if you're looking for some new daily entertainment, check her channel out, and I'd love to help her grow as well. Now if you're a creator that I haven't given a shout out to yet, it's because you build ships also, and I plan to build one of your ships in the future. I'll of course feature your channel, and make sure to provide ample links. Thanks for your patience. Before we get into the combat, let's go over our ship's stats, my assigned crew, my skills, and what difficulty I'm playing on. So here is our finished Basilisk 2 and all of its stats. For crew, I have Amelia Earhart, Andromeda Kepler, Eric Von Price, Gideon Aker, Marika Boros, and Amari Hassan. I'm at level 80 currently, and my skills I have Anatronic Fusion rank 4 and Astrodynamics rank 3, which clearly affects my light year jump range. In the tech tree, I have nothing in ballistics weapons systems. Boost pack training has nothing to do with ship combat. Piloting rank 4. Targeting control systems rank 1 for the functionality. Shield systems rank 3. Nothing in payload still. Engine systems rank 3. Particle beam weapon systems rank 4. I've also got starship design rank 4. I still have not invested in starship engineering. EM weapons I don't use. Boost assault has nothing to do with ship combat. And automated weapon systems, if you didn't know, would stack with whatever damage type turrets you have on your ship. And as always, I'm on very hard mode. With all that out of the way, let's go pick some fights.
If you stayed for the whole video, thank you so, so much for all of your support. Uh, I sincerely appreciate everything that you guys have allowed me to do and how much you have uh, enabled my channel to grow. I'm going to do more episodes of all of my content coming up shortly, and I have two more ship slots to fill. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.